Um, I like to tell people in our community that this is the heart of Antioch on Thursday mornings, and it beats very strong. I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to provide a number of creative venues for you all to um, express yourselves in your soulfulness and uh, for us to uh, gift each other with um, not only smiles, but the opportunity to just be who and what we are. Every Thursday morning for 50 weeks out of the year, Antioch University is the home of a unique women's community. Founded in 1989 by volunteer students, staff, and faculty in response to a request from WHEEL, an advocacy group for homeless women, the Women's Education Program offers an opportunity for the university to act on its mission of social justice and commitment to community collaboration. The program provides homeless women with a clean, sober, warm, and welcoming place to visit for a day program, offers a way for the university to contribute to the community, and offers students an important and transformative learning experience. So I said, sure, I'll come in and set up. You know, that sounds great. And I came in, and the women's breakfast was in the same room, 200, A and B. And I came in, I was one of the first ones there. I went into the kitchen, and I started talking to this very professional looking woman, how are you doing? You know, my name's Candace, I'm here to volunteer. And she just showed me how to set up and what to do. And come to find out, I thought she was a faculty member, come to find out she was one of the guests. She was one of the women that have been coming for years and years. So that was my first epiphany with the women's breakfast. You know, that, that you can't tell by looking at someone that they're homeless. I had all the stereotypical uh, images in my mind about homelessness growing up in the suburbs, but I came to that first breakfast and it was all learning after that. It really opened my mind. Uh, the women's education program isn't about us coming in thinking that we're going to fix the women and or that they're in a state where we come as academics and or educated individuals thinking that they need um, us to uh, attend to their mental health. That many of these women have even in some ways more life experience and education than some of us in that are coming um, as representatives of Antioch. That uh, what they are going to leave with is a sense that, that this is an integrated community, that we each make a contribution, that there's a sense of equity, and that uh, the compassion and empathy that we can show uh, one another, uh, particularly in the context of our creativity, whether it's the writing or the art studio or just sitting like we do each morning with our opening question, that we're learning from one another. Quarterly Soup Bowl fundraisers are well supported by the whole Antioch community. Antioch staff, students, and volunteers arrive to offer their support and share a hearty meal of homemade soups, salads, and desserts and to take home a piece of the wonderful artwork created by the women and volunteers of the program. I've seen women go from being completely introverted and unwilling to talk to people to being outgoing members of the community. And I think a lot of the healing that came about was just through not having an agenda and being accepting. You know, we created a safe space where people could just be and come out in their own time. No one was prying, no one you know, was trying to get them to do something, say something, and uh, it's very fertile and gentle and nurturing. The wisdom we couldn't pay for. The, the free spirit of, and the people in charge, this is like a school, all nations, all social statuses. I think that the WEP is just one of the most uplifting, positive places. And I think it just really fosters community and friendship. And everyone feels like a friend while we're here. And this is definitely one of the highlights of my week, definitely the highlight of my day. And I just love it here. This is where I come for comfort. You know, uh, and I know I always have a place here. So this program has given me faith, more faith. Um, it's given me also uh, hope. And I'm not alone in this world business of being homeless, that should happen. She, and I was just saying, you know, she was talking about how to live in my own happy, happy income, and I, I said, realize, you know, we're used to getting my own nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we do more with nothing when we're homeless than anybody else could. You know, we do more with less than anything. So this is a song called the Susie Orman Blues. <laughs> I ain't got no home. 
I ain't got no shoes, I ain't got no car, I got the nobody blues. I got the Susie Oman, woman with no money blues. On Tuesday, my son turned 28, and I talked to a friend of mine at home, and her son will turn 30 in three weeks. And we were talking about the journey we had taken to get where we are. My other problem is learning how to forgive others that persecute me. And so that's still going on in 2013. <laughs> and only God knows when I'm going to get there, and it takes time. My greatest asset to the community is I am around food lines, I am around oppression, I am around depression, I am around human success. I pray God to keep them away from me, and I get that way sometimes. My greatest one is that let it go, it's history, keep going. One of the stories that's near and dear to my heart is the work study that we've had for the last couple of years, and that's Lee. Uh, the Women's Education Program can provide a context for someone to grow in such a way that they recognize not only their value as a human being, but also uh, recognize that their growth as a student lends to their dynamic abilities to, you know, be a witness to the potential of people making uh, transformation in their lives. People feel the sense of, of acceptance and community immediately. A number of women have talked about how warm and inviting it is. I think in part because not only of the good breakfast, but the sense that, hey, we're just here to kind of hang out, and, and then you're invited to participate in any of the classes. Um, and uh, yeah, and so people come back. Um, who wants to read first? Is it okay if we comment on it? I oh, it was yeah. rather... No, it's fine. What does it matter if a man gained the world? yet lose his immortal soul. I'm really impressed because I see people come in broken, literally self-esteem gone, um, feeling that they're at the bottom, and um, I've watched them and um, unfortunately some have passed, um, but many have gone on and decided to go back to college and get an education and, and discover their artistic talents. That the women here make my spirits feel better, um, you know, to make me want to go and, like, I, I uh, Sponsored Recovery Cafe. I go and take lunch at the Empowerment Center, and that's my gift to the world of, of the government's help, the government of society of us women. And, um, sisterhood is an extremely important <coughs> and uh, cherished. I'm a mess, but I'm a nice, compassionate mess. I, I'll help anybody and everybody, and sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> but, um, um, a lot of people think I'm funny, but you know, there's different kinds of funny. Uh, I better not go there, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> You know, we all have a sense of humor. It, it, we all have a lot of things in us, and we just have to tap into it. But I come with a lot. <laughs> That's this big old dynamite package. <laughs> and if I can keep smiling all the way through it, you're okay. Then I'm all right. No matter how messed up it gets, I keep on smiling. <laughs> You know, after 15 years, the program's still dynamic, there's great potential, and it's a representation of, of an educational institution uh, following its values. I see so much wisdom and emotional intelligence, spirituality, and compassion. And too often in this world, we judge people by how much money they make, what kind of degrees they have, how much status there is in their position, 
And that's not the real measure of achievement. I think the real measure of achievement is how uh, mature and real and compassionate we are as individuals. And that room is filled with women of great achievement. So it's a place where we come to grow. Indeed. And I'm grateful. One of the things that I think is so valuable about this community is that we come here as equals, really, as women. And yes, there is a professor in the room, and there are students in the room, and there are women who are homeless and staying in shelters, and there are women who have their own you know, apartments through Section 8. Um, but none of that matters.